everyone my name is mini sethi i hope you all are staying healthy today we are going to talk about most important concept of money supply like measures of money supply determinants of money supply like high powered money and money multiplier especially for ca foundation what do you mean by money supply money supply means the total amount of money which is available to public during specific time period money supply means total amount of money which is available to public during specific time period like uh, cash coins and uh, money deposit in banks during uh, 1977 reserve bank of india introduced four measures of money supply like m1 m2 m3 and m4 one by one we discuss about each first measure of money supply is m1 M1 is most liquid portion of money supply. That means M1 consists of cash or any asset which we can convert into cash very quickly. That's why M1 is equal to currency and coins with public plus demand deposit with commercial bank plus other deposit with RBI. Currency and coins with public means a physical form of money which we hold as a cash. For example, paper uh, notes and demand deposit of commercial bank allow to withdraw money without giving any advance notice. That means demand deposit we can quickly convert into cash. Next is other deposit with RBI. some time public finance institution foreign central bank international institution deposit their money with rbi it will be called other deposit with rbi second major of money supply is m2 m2 is a broader concept as compared to m1 m2 is broader concept as compared to m1 that means m2 consists all components of m1 plus saving account with the post office that's why m2 equal to m1 plus saving account with the post office that means m2 consist all components of m1 as we earlier discussed plus saving account with the post office that's why we can say that m2 is broader concept as compared to m1 as we know saving account with post office is a deposit scheme that is provided by post office in this account they provide fixed interest rate next measure of money supply is m3 m3 equal to m1 plus net time deposits with bank that means m3 include all components of m1 as we earlier discussed plus net time deposit with bank net time deposit with bank is total amount of money which we deposit in bank for fixed time period and we can withdraw this amount only after maturity of fixed time period next major of money supply is m4 m4 equal to m3 plus total deposits of post office but excluding an sc that means m4 include all components of m3 plus total deposits of post office but exclude an sc total deposits of post office mainly include fixed deposit recurring deposit plus an sc are also part of total deposit with post office an sc is national saving certificate that is fixed income investment scheme so all three are part of a total deposit of post office like fixed deposit recurring deposit and an sc but in m4 we only include fixed deposit and recurring deposit but exclude nsc that means in m4 we don't include nsc so our m4 is equal to m3 all components of m3 as we earlier discussed plus total deposit of post office but exclude nsc now we are going to talk about determinants of money supply first most important determinants of money supply is high powered money high powered money is that amount of money which is actually injected issued or we can say that printed by rbi or government high powered money is that amount of money which is actually injected issued or we can say that printed by rbi or government high powered money is base for creation for money supply it will be called our monetary base 
some part of high powered money go to public and some part goes to banks as we know public don't have power to make money from money through the process of credit creation but bank have power to make money from money through the process of credit creation that's why our money supply influenced by our high powered money and process of credit creation suppose high powered money is 1500 that is total amount of money which is printed by rbi some part goes to public suppose 500 goes to public this amount will remain as it is because public don't have power to make money from money through the process of credit creation 1000 rupees goes to bank suppose this 1000 rupees goes to bank bank keep 100 rupees as a reserve and remaining 900 rupees give loans to someone with this loan person purchased something and give this amount to shopkeeper ultimately shopkeeper deposit this money in bank again bank keep 90 rupees as a reserve and remaining 810 rupees give loan to some other person uh, this person purchased something from uh, this 810 rupees and uh, give to shopkeeper and shopkeeper deposit this money in bank means eventually this 810 rupees deposit in bank this process will continue so you can see after some time period total amount will equal to 10000 rupees so here you can see with 1000 high powered money through the process of credit creation bank make 10000 rupees that's why our money supply influenced by high powered money and credit creation process of banks now we'll see formula of high powered money h equal to c plus rr plus er h is a high powered money c is a currency in circulation held by public that means a physical form of a money like paper note coins in the hand of public and businesses obviously this part of high powered money cannot use for the purpose of credit creation rr is required reserve held by commercial bank with the central bank commercial bank cannot use required reserve for the process of credit creation er is excess reserve held by commercial bank with the central bank commercial bank can use excess reserve for the purpose of credit creation so this is formula of high powered money this part of high powered money goes to bank and this part goes to public as we earlier discussed some part of high powered money goes to bank and some part goes to public public cannot create money from money through the process of credit creation but bank can create money from money through the process of credit creation next most important determinant of money supply is money multiplier money multiplier measure how much money supply expand in economy through the process of credit creation by banks money multiplier measure how much money expand in economy through the process of credit creation by banks or we can say that money multiply measure how initial deposit of banks lead to large increase in overall money supply formula of money multiplier is 1 over r here r is reserve ratio reserve ratio means percentage of deposit banks are required to hold as a reserve means these reserve bank need to hold they cannot use for credit purpose so here we assume value of r is equal to 20% so here we put the value of r which is equal to 20% 1 over 20% when we solve this it will become equal to 5 that means value of money multiplier is 5 now suppose initial deposits of bank or we can say the initial high powered money is equal to 10000 we multiply 10000 with 5 because value of money multiplier is 5 10000 multiply with the 5 is become equal to 50000 that means through the process of credit creation bank can expand money supply that is equal to 50000 so we can say the money multiplier mainly measure how much money expand in economy through the process of credit creation by banks so this is all about most important concept of money supply i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video by take care